guitar heroes, Eric Andreas, your guitar sage here. Let me ask you, have you ever wanted to play your chords up and down the fretboard like your favorite rock star? If you've answered yes, my friends, you're in the right place. Today I'm going to show you exactly how to do that using what I call the toggle method. Okay. Basically, this idea is derived from the caged system. I've taught that before. So if you know the caged system, this is going to drive that even further home to you and show you how important that method is. If you don't never heard of the cage system or never got it before, today I'm going to show you a different way to look at this, what I call the toggle method, which is truly going to get you to understand at any point on the fretboard, wherever you're at, playing a major chord, you'll be able to play it in five different ways. Okay? Very, very powerful stuff, my friends. So, without further ado, here we go. So, what we're going to do is we're going to base this off of either the sixth string root or the fifth string root. There's basically only two places that we need to know where our root is, the root of our chord. And if we know what that root is, then my friends, we can easily do this to any chord. Okay. Now, if you don't know the notes up and down the fretboard, you can uh, take advantage of my $1 course. The link for that's in the description of the video. It's like a thousand videos, literally, of guitar lessons for you for a buck. Okay. So if you need more help, I can help you with that. But today, what we're going to be covering is this specific thing. Okay. Now, we've all seen this chord form before, right? What's known as the E major chord form. If you could think about this as being in the open position and this being the nut, right? Then if that were the nut, that's what the E chord would look like, right? But if we were doing a bar chord, we were moving this up and down the fretboard like you can do, right? Then this is what it would look like. We'd bar this with our first finger and this would be third, fourth, and second, okay? Now the fingering, we're not even gonna worry so much about. I may throw in some, some fingerings for you so that you understand what we're doing. But bottom line, this is more a concept so that you can understand at any point when you're playing a major chord that you've got four other options as well. This is great for if you're playing in a, in a, a band where one guitar player is playing one chord, but you don't want to be on top of that same exact chord, but you want to be playing in, se in sequence together and you want to be playing uh, the same harmonies and that sort of thing, okay? <clears throat> so we have this chord form right here, what we call the E major chord form. There are basically five major open chords, C, A, G, E, and D. C major, A major, G major, E major, and D major, hence the word cage. So if you're ever seeing the cage system, that's roughly what this is based off of, but we're looking at it in a different way, okay? So what we have here is we have our E form, okay? We're ignoring this right now. We just have our E form right there. Now at any point, Whenever you play either the E form or the G form, this note could be down here if we wanted, you can play many chords many different ways, then at any point, if you're playing one of these forms, you will automatically know that the other chord is immediately available to you using the toggle method. Why do I call it toggle? Because to me, this is the toggle. This is the one note that you are naming, in this case here, it's an A, okay, that's the A, so E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A. So this is an A major chord. This right here is an A major chord. Now we're gonna be playing one or the other. We're not gonna be playing both of them, okay? But the concept that I want you to walk away from today is that when you see this note on the sixth string and you can identify it, then you can easily play this form of the major chord or this form of the major chord. You've got your choice very easily, okay? Now, I'm gonna show you a third chord that you can play from this, okay? We've got a sixth string root and we have a fifth string root, okay? This is gonna be the sixth string root where we're gonna find three chords and the fifth string root, we're gonna be able to find two chords. So this is the more powerful of the two. Now, you can see that I have one, three, five here. That's how you construct a major chord. You don't have to know what that is. I teach it in all my programs. If you're really interested, you can delve into it with the $1 deal uh, where you've got all those videos available to you, okay? Otherwise, you don't have to know it. Just know that these are finger placements, okay? These are where your fingers are going to be at some point or another, okay? Now, the red is rep represents the one, also known as the root of the chord. 
It's also the letter name of the chord. So if this is on an A, then it's going to be some sort of A chord. If it, this were back here, it would be an A minor chord. If this were here, it would be A major. If it were here, it would be an A seventh chord, that sort of thing. It's all based off of the A, okay, the tonic or the root, okay? So we've got that form. Now, this right here is also our root, okay? This is also an A. If we take our sixth string root and we go down two strings and up two frets, we can find another tonic or another root, I should say. So here we are. We're going to go down two, up two, okay? That's how you find the other one. And we can base a chord off of this, and it would be our D form. We said the cage system is C, A, G, E, and D, those forms. But we're thinking about this slightly differently in that we're not doing it in a linear fashion like we would the cage system. We're using these toggles because at any one point, you're only going to be playing either the sixth string or fifth string root, right? You're not going to be playing all these different other forms. So you're going to be able to toggle back and forth very quickly by just thinking about that instead of five different forms, although you'll have them at your fingertips, okay? So here we go. If we wanted to play yet another form based off of our sixth string root, we can go right here and we can play this D form. Okay, so let me show you how this works. So if everything back here is gone, this is basically the form that we have. Looks familiar, doesn't it? It looks like a D chord because it's a D chord form. Now, you may be saying to yourself, what are you talking about, Eric? I see all these different dots, but how is that all equating to a chord? Listen, we're only playing one at a time, either the G form or the E form or the D form right here, okay? We're not playing them all at once and we don't have to play the entire chord. We're just playing a portion of it or whatever it is that your artistry says you should be, you should be playing. But basically this allows us to, to extrapolate these different chords out of that pattern, okay? So for instance, if you just play those three notes right there, that's a chord. If you just play these three notes right here, that's a chord or these three notes, that's a chord, as long as all these colors are represented, okay? So that's based off of the sixth string root, okay? Very simple, very easy. You have your G form, you've got your E form, or you have your D form right there. Now, let's check out the fifth string root chords. Okay, so using the toggle method, let's take a look at the fifth string root. Remember I said with this toggle method, we can basically either go off of the sixth string root or the fifth string root. And if we put the two together, we get five different combinations, uh, loosely based off of the cage system. But in this case here, really the way that I'm wanting you to look at, at any one point, you're either going to be playing in the fifth, uh, you're going to be playing a fifth string root chord or a sixth string root chord. And from there, you'll immediately have at least one other chord. But in the case of the sixth string root chord, you've got two other chords that you can choose from immediately. If you know right where the fifth and sixth string roots are, you've got all five available to you. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Now, basically what we're doing in this case here is we're, we're thinking about the two chords that can be played in the open position that have a, a fifth string root. Those two chords are C major and A major, okay? Remember, there's no other fifth string root major open chords. There's just not. You may say, well, how about a B7? Well, although that's major, it's still, it's a dominant seventh chord, okay? So, I mean, a strict major chord, we just have A major and C major as far as fifth string root chords. So, that's what we're going to be using is we're going to be using those two shapes. And again, anytime you're playing one, you've got the other. So just like we did earlier, we're going to be basically playing either an A major shape or we're going to be playing a C major shape. So what I want you to do is think of this for a moment. Think about this as being the nut of the guitar, and this would be the second fret. And so normally if you're playing an A major chord, you'd use fingers two, three, and four, or fingers one, two, and three, however however you normally play it. But since we have to bar it, right? If you don't know anything about bar chords, you need to watch my bar chord videos and I'll show you how to actually finger these chords. But right now, we want to conceptualize how to form them on the fretboard and then that helps us do everything that we need as far as theory moving up and down the fretboard. So in this case here, we would bar this with the first finger and we need to bar this with our third finger, hyperextending that, 
Again, I te teach all that in the bar chord videos. Or we bar this and use fingers two, three, four. Okay, a couple different ways we can do that. And then the other, the other chord that's connected to this is the C major chord. So imagine if this right here were a, if this right here were the nut, that's what a C chord would look like, right? But since we have to bar it, since we have to play everything, this is what we do is we bar this with our first finger, second fingers here, three and four. Okay, so that's how you would finger this. But the the concept, the really the walk away, the takeaway from this is that anytime you're playing an A major form, remember this form can be moved up and down the fretboard. So we don't really want to call it an A major chord, although it's A major in this case, okay? But if this were moved up a half step, it would be a sharp major. Or if it was moved down a half step, it would be a flat major, okay? Or G sharp major, whatever you want to say. Uh, but nonetheless, we want to just think about the form because the form moves up and down. Now here's the deal. When these move up one, these move up one. Everything moves together. You could think about this whole little set here is moving together collectively, okay? So what that means is at any point when you're playing an A major form, you immediately have this C major form that you can toggle back and forth to. Anytime you're playing the C major form, you can toggle back to the A major form. So what I want you to do is, again, think about it as the toggle method because at any one point you're just playing one chord okay and if you know where both of the notes are on the sixth and fifth string you can play all five versions but really when you're in the moment and you're playing this A chord what you're going to be doing if you get in the practice of thinking about this and playing it a few times like I've shown you here just because you're watching this video doesn't mean you're going to get it you're going to have to actually play this a few times and conceptualize it in your mind and in your fingers before it actually starts sinking in. So don't just watch the video. Practice this afterwards, okay? So you're playing that A major form. Know that that C major form is always right there. If you're playing the C major form, the A major form is always right there. You can use these as arpeggios or chords. And you might say to yourself, well, Eric, why would I do that? Well, because if you, one guitar player in your band is playing this, you don't want to be playing the same exact chord. It's not the end of the world, but it's not going to be as creative as, creative as if, if you were playing some other form, some other voicing of that chord. It's going to make more depth to the music. It's going to make it a bigger sound because more notes are being represented. Okay? Very simple stuff, but very, very, very powerful stuff. Now, you see all these different colors and what have you, and you see these different forms. This is how I teach in all my courses. This is how I teach in the Unstoppable Guitar System, in my Udemy courses, uh, the whole enchilada. So if this is of interest to you, my friends, we the dollar is back. We have a special where we used to make the whole my whole system available for 14 days for a dollar. Well, now we do it for 30 days, and the system is way bigger. I have another whole other course in there, literally close to 1,000 guitar lessons and nearly 600 jam tracks, all available to you right now for one dollar. Now, I know some folks don't have a dollar if you don't want to do that, and but you still need help from this, then take my, take advantage of my free course at yourguitarsage.com slash 30 at least, okay? I'd really prefer you to be in the, the big course where you can see everything, but if you don't have a dollar to spend, I totally understand that. I still want to help you play guitar. My friends, I'm very passionate about teaching guitar and playing guitar. I've done it for decades now, and I love helping folks out. So please, let me know how I can help you. You got the dollar special, yourguitarsage.com slash one, and you've got the free course, yourguitarsage.com dot com slash 30. Both those links should be in the description of this video. Otherwise, I just gave them to you. So please let me know how I can help you. Please thumbs up, subscribe if you like this video. I have uh, over a thousand videos here on YouTube as well. So I have 2,000 videos basically for you for a dollar. Okay, so please let me know how I can help. I think between all those videos, I can help you. Uh, leave your comments below. Let me know if I've forgotten anything or if I can help you in any way on the guitar. My friends, I'm Eric Andreas, your guitar sage. As always, be kind to all beings. Do the right thing, always. Practice your guitar. I'll see you in another video.